Rahim, we start the chapter on uh, protein synthesis, and as asked by you all, I'm doing some questions on that, so that this is, I know, a very difficult chapter. So let's start. We read this question number one: Red blood cells are formed from cells called reticulocytes, uh, stem cells, and the bone marrow produce reticulocytes, which differentiate into red blood cells. During differentiation, hemoglobin is produced. Figure 6.1 shows the structure of a small section of DNA and messenger RNA in the nucleus of a reticulocyte during transcription. Now, if you look at this, this is the DNA. This is the section of DNA, which is this one, and this is the RNA, which is on this side. Now, they've given you this diagram, and look at it very carefully, and then say, name the bases P2S. Name the bases P2S. Now, how would you want to figure this out? This was very easy because you see, if you know AT is a double bond and CG is a triple bond, C is the third letter of the alphabet and it always has three bonds with G. So here you can see two bonds. Here you can see one, two, three bonds. Here you can see three. So how are you going to figure this out? This is important that you know that if it was this was this was DNA, this was RNA, right? Now DNA, if this is adenine, P had to be thymine. So P had to be thymine. Understand how you're going to do this question. Then it said you have to identify Q. Now you know Q. Adenine and guanine are purines and they have a double ring. Adenine and guanine are purines and they have a double ring. So this was adenine. Now this is a double ring, so this has to be guanine. So adenine and guanine are purines. So then Q, what was Q going to be? Q had to be, Q had to be cytosine. So this is how you are going to find out. Then coming on to R. Now again three, so it has to be either this is C or this is G. Now this was a double ring. You can see here that this is a double ring. The R is a double ring. This is a double ring. So R had to be guanine. These are double rings. Adenine and guanine are double rings. This is something which you have to know. This is something which you have to memorize and you have to learn. So P, Q, and R. Then what was S? So you've got to understand how are you going to figure out what was S. Number one, it was only found in uh, RNA. So how are you going to figure that out that, you know, how is S going to be? Why was S uracil? Basically, you had to see because P was thymine. P was thymine. So this, if it had RNA, had to be adenine. And adenine is double ring. So as we go down, this was adenine. Now, you know, adenine, if it's in the DNA, doesn't have in RNA, there's no P. So there had to be a U here. And this was the uracil which was attaching to it. Because in transcription, DNA is converted into DNA sort copied by the mRNA. So this is how they were figured out that uh, S was going to be uracil. So if you wrote all these correct, uh, you got four marks for this, and there's no 0.5 in uh, biology. So either you get the four marks or you don't get the four marks. You get either you get one or two for any ones which were correct. So coming to the B part of the question. Uh, describe the role of the mRNA molecule shown in figure 6.1. So copy of the DNA travels from DNA to ribosome for translation. Then mRNA codes for the sequence of amino acids. Uh, the nucleotide sequence is in a series of codons. You see the AAA codes for certain amino acids, B, uh, UUU codes for another. So the DNA, then the mRNA, then the mRNA has codons on it, then the tRNA has anticodons on it, and when they match, they bring the correct amino acid. So base pairing between codon on mRNA and anticodon on tRNA. 
Oh, maybe one, some of you have understood it, but then again, the problem with all of you is that you are unable to write the correct English in the exam and you're unable to um, get it across to the examiner what you're trying to say. You might know it, but then you have to learn how to write it. So your writing skills must improve. Exam skills, study skills, writing skills, all must improve. Now coming to question number two, antibodies are secreted by activated B lymphocytes known as plasma cells. Figure 1.1 is a diagram showing the cellular processes involved in the production of a polypeptide of an antibody molecule. Now you can say DNA to RNA. So this has to be transcription. And this is taking place inside the nucleus. Now this of course is the nuclear membrane which has these pores through which this mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and come out into the cytoplasm. And then you see the mRNA comes out and then of course we have all these different molecules which have been shown to you. So D is a tRNA molecule. It has a very typical clover leaf design. And at the base of it are these anticodons. And on the mRNA, you have the codons. And then the proteins are being put together here. So this is translation occurring here at 3, in which the proteins, these amino acids, these are all the amino acids being put together. So the amino acids, why are they of different shapes? Because they're 20 different amino acids. And then, of course, we have B, which is the... Uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. Why? Because to which are attached the ribosomes. The ribosomes are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now they've shown you this line they've shown you in this area, which is this thing that they've shown you here. So ribosome attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes. So these are the fixed ribosomes. Now, if you look at the answer, the questions which they have asked you, they've asked you very basic questions. Name structures A, B and C. Now, name structures A was the nuclear envelope, B was the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but reject RER, the abbreviation is not allowed here. So this is why I've written this reject RER means that the, um, this was not allowed in the mark scheme that you could not use this abbreviation, though we allow you to use that abbreviation a number of times. But in this case, it was not allowed that you use the abbreviation why? because it says the name. Somebody might be called Bubbly and Bunty, but her name is something else. Maybe his name is Shogufta. So you don't call her Bubbly and Bunty then. So rough endoplasmic reticulum and C was, of course, the ribosome. Even that RRNA was not allowed. That's a reject. Then name the molecule D. Now, the molecule D is a transfer RNA. And that for that, that is why tRNA was allowed. tRNA is the abbreviation for it. That, but that's a molecule that you had to be talking about. Then state what is occurring at 1, 2, and 3. Transcription is occurring, amino acid activation. What is amino acid activation? Means that the amino acids are being attached to the uh, tRNA. That's called amino acid activation. That is, of course, also in the new syllabus that you need to know this very well. Amino acid activation. And then translation was when that mRNA is then finally the code is given to the, the tRNA binds to it and the amino acids are put together in the right sequence and you get a polypeptide. Now antibodies are glycoproteins. What is meant by glycoprotein? A protein which is combined with a carbohydrate. Don't say glycogen. I usually when I'm teaching you, I say G for glycogen, but you have to say, remember, it's not always glycogen. It's just any carbohydrate or a sugar which is attached to it. Then it says the genes responsible for antibody production are found on different... Uh, chromosomes such as chromosome 2 and 14 in humans explain how one antibody molecule is the product of more than one gene why because there are many polypeptide chains they're too heavy and too light and each different polypeptide is coded by a gene and the gene coding for the enzyme for the carbohydrate attachment i mean there has to be an enzyme which is responsible for attaching the carbohydrate to it and making it a glycoprotein so this is how you have to do this part of the question Let's look at the uh, mark scheme for the next part. Describe and explain how the structure of an antibody molecule is related to its functions. Now, first, before I go on the mark scheme, I want to show you a diagram. Now, I want you to see this diagram and understand that there is a variable region. And that's where the antigen binds. So this is the variable region. Now, if you see, this is the variable region, this sort of a structure here, which is because of specific R groups of... Uh, the amino acids which form this part of it, the heavy chain and the light chain. Then there's an antigen binding site and then you have the antigen which binds to it. So there are two 
antigen binding sites. Then you have the disulfide bonds which are holding the together. Then you have this is called the constant region. The constant region is this this part. And then you have the carbohydrates which are attached to it here. The carbohydrates attached to it. So understand all these, these are very important portions which you have to be understanding. So disulfide bonds which hold the two heavy chains together and the light chains are also held by the disulfide bonds here and here. Right? Now let's look at the mark scheme. So as you can see the mark scheme, variable region has antigen binding site. Complementary shape to the antigen. Two antigen binding sites per molecule. Constant region binds to receptors on phagocytes. Yeah, that's what you've got to understand. The constant region binds to very specific receptors on the phagocytes and that of course facilitates the phagocytosis. Hinge region gives flexibility. Disulfide bonds holds the chains together. And the R groups bind to antigen by hydrogen bonding. So the R groups on the amino acids of the variable region will bind to the antigen. So please understand this and I hope this is better now. Question number three, one of the enzymes involved in glycogen synthesis is glycogen synthase. The monomer of the glycogen polymer is alpha glucose. Draw the ring form. So that was two marks and you have to give me all the different of this things. So this is something you've got to learn. Then it says glycogen synthase catalyzes the formation of a covalent bond between two glucose, two alpha glucose molecules. Name the type of bond. Naturally, it's a glycosidic bond, nothing else but the glycosidic bond. So name the type of bond, then glycogen branching enzyme is another enzyme that is required for glycogen synthesis. Suggest why glycogen branching enzyme is needed in addition to glycogen synthase. Suggest why glycogen branching enzyme is needed in addition to glycogen synthase to form 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Or you can say it has to be a complementary active site needed for form the bonds needed for branching. Then the gene coding for glycogen synthase in muscle cells is known as GYS1. Explain what is meant by a gene. Gene is a sequence of bases, or you can say part of a DNA molecule, which codes for a polypeptide. Protein here was also allowed. You could have even said enzyme was also allowed. But you couldn't have said it's a genetic code for a polypeptide. That's someone, many of you wrote that, but that's a reject in the mark schemes. So reject means a large number of students wrote that BS, beautiful story. And that's why the reject is given to us as examiners here when we are checking the papers and we would then have this reject added to it because a large number of students wrote this uh, story which was incorrect. Question part two, it says that there are a number of known mutations for GYS1. Now outline how a mutation of GYS1 can lead to the formation of an altered polypeptide where one amino acid is replaced by a different amino acid. Now they've specifically told you this. If you look at the question, they have said one amino acid replaced by a different. So what could have happened in the DNA? The DNA has been mutated. So mutation is always in the DNA. It can't be anywhere else. So the mutations are always in the DNA. Remember that. Now what has happened in the DNA? Not that the, the deoxyribose or the phosphate have been affected, but the base has been affected. So there's an altered sequence of bases. Instead of AAA, now it is maybe ATA or maybe ACA or maybe AGA. And originally it was AAA. So altered sequence of bases. Now could be a base substitution in which one base is substituted by another one. Like for instance in AAA, it's ATA now. And then what happens is that this substituted base is now copied by the mRNA. So the mRNA synthesizes, synthesis during transcription takes place of the wrong DNA. Now this is of course results in a wrong mRNA or an altered mRNA. And now the altered mRNA codon changes. The codon changes. So different tRNA will bind to that anticodon because if it's AAA and now it is ATA. So now the, the, this is the, the codon will be then what? UAU. Now, whatever is UAU is the codon. Now, the anti-codon will be what? AUA. So, this is how the whole thing changes. So, amino acid, different codon, different antibody, anti-codon binding. So, if you have known, if you know your chapter, you know it very well, what is transcription and translation, you can understand this, what is going to happen. Part C, table 6, one control, three functions of cell structure that involved uh, in the synthesis of glycogen, complete table 611 by naming the cell structure. When it asks you the name, please do not give abbreviations like RER and SCR 
and carries out the function listed. So assembles ribosomes for polypeptide synthesis. You know ribosomes assembly is done on the nucleolus inside the nucleus. Synthesis ATP, synthesizes ATP to provide a supply of energy by trans, for transcription of GYS1 mitochondrion. Folds and modifies synthesized polypeptide to produce functioning glycogen synthase. So it could be the Golgi, could be the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now coming to the A part of it, name the bond label P, hydrogen bonds. Use figure 4.1 to describe the role of tRNA in protein synthesis. You may annotate figure 4.1 to help your answer. So tRNA carries an amino acid to the ribosomes. Each tRNA carries a specific amino acid. Anticodon binds to codon on mRNA. tRNA molecule binds, uh, holds amino acids in place for peptide bond formation. And tRNA molecule is reused. So any three out of these, I'm not saying you need all of these, but any three out of these would get you your three out of three. And coming to the last part of the question, C, tRNA molecules are synthesized inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Now, this was a little technically difficult because you do not sort of study this tRNA. So if it is mRNA or tRNA or rRNA, basically they're coded in the DNA. That is why the latest definition of a gene is a gene is a portion of DNA which codes for a polypeptide or a nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are what? This is the latest definition of gene. You see, we used to think that genes were only a portion of DNA coding for a protein. But now, of course, we know they also code for the rRNA and the tRNA. So tRNA molecules are synthesized inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells. Outline the process by which tRNA molecules are synthesized in the nucleus. So gene for each tRNA molecule is transcribed DNA to mRNA. So there must be a gene for each tRNA molecule. Then hydrogen bonds in the DNA are broken. Then one strand of DNA acts as the template. Then we need the RNA polymerase. And then, of course, the nucleotides, the free nucleotides are joined together, forming the phosphodiester bond. So a complete mRNA molecule is made. So the mRNA is copying the DNA. And then, of course, this will leave the nucleus and go and attach on the ribosome. And then, of course, protein synthesis will take place or translation will take place on the ribosome, which is in the cytoplasm, either the free ribosome or the fixed ribosome. So that uh, completes this one video and I'll do a few more questions in the next video and uh, then we can continue with the other chapters. Thank you very much for watching.